Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. Good evening and welcome to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. I'm Chris Randazzo and joining me tonight is lumpy brown alien Dan Ryan. Aw, that's kind of upset. <laughs> Aw, but you're lovable. Am I, am I at least the alien you want for Christmas? Oh, I'm the alien everyone wants for Christmas. That's right. Fountains of Wayne reference right here. See, I I, I thought that's where you were going, but I wasn't of sure if you were actually going for the famous commercial about the lovely brown alien I was talking about. But anyway, it's no. the final 10, 20, 30, 40 of the year. No. Why are all the Reese's Pieces brown? Summon your mother ship me because the Star Wars <laughs> Gamer Podcast starts now. <laughs> We must be talking about E.T. at some point. We certainly are. Hi, everyone. And this is episode 443. It's the week of December 30th, 2022. And yeah, I mean, obviously, the Fountains of Wayne, I Want an Alien for Christmas, one of my favorite Christmas songs. But I was like, I was I was thinking somewhere, like, is he doubling up? Is he actually re- re- referring to the E.T. Christmas commercial? I don't know. I, I totally forgot that this was E.T. month. I totally... I'm a bad friend. Bad podcast host. <laughs> Truly, no one can be faulted for not remembering when E.T. came out for Atari 2600. I did, I did just see, as we were out doing some Christmas shopping for the, uh, for the children, um, I did just see the new NECA Ultimate E.T. figure, and uh, it's fucking <laughs> glorious. I really, really like it. You say Ultimate E.T., and I'm thinking, like, <laughs> <laughs> Battle Damage Super Saiyan Oh, e. yeah. No, for sure. He comes with, like, a tiger. It's really weird. <laughs> I mean, it's, I believe it's one of the cut scenes from the uh, original E.T. is when he rides a tiger into battle. Um, yeah, there was an entire battle scene. <laughs> yeah, <cut>. re- <laughs> it's just, oh, man. Yeah, no, it's just, it's a really nice figure, and I would like it very much. E.T. fights the Confederacy. <laughs> what a movie, well, they made all of those. F- E.T. was like the fucking Captain America serials. <laughs> <laughs> E.T. versus the Nazis. Fuck you, Hitler. Remember when he said his famous line? E.T.'s famous movie quote, fuck you, fuck Hitler. You, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Putting out that big, long middle finger. <laughs> oh, oh, that wasn't a finger. <laughs> phone home you kraut bitch like Jesus <laughs> uh, just go grab a speak and spell you fucking kugel eating prick god damn it Oh so, man! Uh, well, it's the 10, 20, 30, 40, so obviously we should get uh, get to work as quickly as possible. So you got to yeah. Be, uh, this is this is our last show before Christmas, obviously, and uh, well, it's and we're recording on till, Wednesday. Yeah, it's not coming out till after Christmas, right? So technically, last week's was our last one before. Uh, I don't know. I, whatever. I mean, time we're recording this on Wednesday. The last yeah. time we recorded was Friday. That was fucking like a, essentially three days ago. Uh, um, no, I haven't played shit. Because it's the week before Christmas, Chris. I'm fucking wood burning and like Christmas shopping and shit. I, that's not true. We, over the weekend, when the kids were still feeling like a little sick, <clears throat> um, mm. but like well enough to kind of like they wanted to then like <clears throat> spend time with their family, um, which is like, oh God, it's just the worst because they smell and they're hairy. Shave your legs, you beasts. They're like, now it's winter. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're at that point of our lives. Um, we, uh, we played a bunch of, uh, Sonic or team Sonic racing, Sonic team racing, however the fuck it's supposed to be said. Um, cause that's just on the PlayStation plus and Katie is like super duper obsessed with Sonic. Um, so we played a whole mess of that and that game. It's not as good as Sonic team racing transformed. Mm-hmm. Um, that game's fucking awesome. I love that. But this is like. It's, uh, this isn't news, it's an old-ass game, but, like, 
it's a decent uh it's a decent enough kart racing game she's going to be much more excited once santa claus brings her mario kart 8 uh for the switch and all of us can play that instead um but like yeah like it, it's we've just been playing through that and then hero and i finished uh pumpkin jack which was really really good it was really right, really fun was, okay that was a game all right yes it was really really fun because i'm talking um, to you and i'm like was that a beer or a video game <laughs> <laughs> no that's fair that's fair um we started playing it around halloween and then like things just got in the way but like it works because you have to fight santa claus in uh in fucking pumpkin jack um so it was really good it's a really really good like kind of classic uh n64 era like platformer not necessarily a collectathon type game um although it does have like some elements of that but just really solid controls graphics are really good really fun good music um very similar to like a hat in time that kind of level of production of like this is just below like a mainstream title you know like this is exactly what i expect out of an indie platformer and it was uh it was really good and more importantly, Hero really liked it. She was like, oh, this is like my new favorite game ever. It's like, well, I mean, maybe fucking pump the brakes there a little bit. That's a little crazy. But, you know. You kind of so, have to be, you know? Yeah. Who isn't a little crazy? Uh, I guess that, that would bring me to a question. I was, uh, I, was one of the things that we did. Um, has she watched Sonic Prime yet? Katie has not um, because she wasn't sure if there were spoilers for Sonic Frontiers in Prime, so she wanted to wait to see if she got Frontiers for Christmas, uh, hmm. which which she's get, which she is getting, um, so that she wouldn't spoil it for herself. Huh? Yeah, I don't think it has anything to do with any of the games. I don't think so either. But she was just like, I just don't want to spoil any of it. Okay. Hmm, all right. That's fine. My we, my we fucking psychopathic it. spoiler thing is like worn off on her. <laughs> well, that's so, good. It is. I it's, think it's hereditary. <laughs> is it? Is it good? Uh, is it uh, all right? Well, uh, all right. So, so uh, surprisingly, it was Ellie who uh, started watching it, and she was watching it on her tablet one day, and I saw her. I was like, "Oh, is that that? That's that new Sonic show." She was like, "Yeah, it's really good. Do you want to watch it with me?" I was like yeah sure so, <laughs> no but i will <laughs> we've been watching that after uh after school for the last two days so i'm the first episode's a double episode so it's like 40 some odd minutes and i think we just watched the following couple episodes uh, it's, it's pretty good it's you know i'm not saying it's like yes this shit's amazing i'm gonna watch the hell out of it <laughs> this um, is the best but, fucking show ever it's it's very pretty uh it's the most game accurate I think I've ever seen a Sonic mm. thing. Um, like he he runs around and collects rings. It makes no sense. Like he's just like <laughs> he's just doing it. He runs into the. He doesn't grab them. He runs into them. They make the noise and they disappear. It's just like in the video game. He's like, oh, I better go ring up in case Eggman gets a couple shots on me. And then he runs and grabs some rings. It's like oh. <laughs> I better go ring up. <laughs> It's That's fantastic. Weird. It is it, it is weird. It's got a pretty decent sense of humor. Um so it's it's like a it so it starts off in Green Hill and it looks wonderful. Uh just it's very much the Green Hill from the video games. I'm trying to look up the episode list so I can see how far I got. And um Eggman's trying to get some weird crystal that's not a Chaos Emerald. And Sonic, uh, you know, doesn't listen to Tails or anybody else, just rushes in to go, like, fuck shit up. And he breaks the crystal, and it, like, shatters reality. So it's like a multiverse thing. So he wakes up in this alternate universe where uh, there's, like, a whole council of Eggmans. Like, one of them's an old Eggman, one of them's a baby, one of them's a teenager. <laughs> and, like, they've, <laughs> That's... Taken over, they've taken over the world. They call it New, New York City. <laughs> Nice. Uh, and, like, so, like, Amy's a cyborg. Uh, Knuckles and Rouge are pretty much the same, but Tails was, like, uh, nobody was ever... Like, Sonic never 
stopped him from getting bullied as a kid so he like lives underground and he has a mm. bunch of robot tails so he's called he calls himself nine because he's got nine tails oh okay uh, and like so the first couple episodes we watched were them in that universe and then i think we just got to the point where he left that universe to go to another one like they found the source of the power or whatever and sonic touched sure. it and got sucked in and then I looked at the you know title of the next episode, and it looked like where the hell are the episodes? There we go. Um, <laughs> second episode's called "The Yokes on You." <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah. Nice. So we watched the first three episodes. So the fourth episode looks like they're going to a different. He's going to a different reality, and I just have to assume that at a certain point, all those realities are going to you know conglom together and then all the different versions of all these different characters will yeah save the day or whatever uh, but it's you know it's 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 not bad it, i don't certainly don't mind watching it the humor's a little uh you know i don't know if juvenile is the right word it's not super sharp um sure but it's a uh, i like it better than i like the sonic movie and i'll tell you that for free and i, do, I mean i didn't dislike the sonic movie but i didn't yeah really no. like it Sure. Uh, all that much. I just think this this is so much more. This feels so much more like a Sonic the Hedgehog thing, not like a thing that somebody slapped Sonic in. It's very right, true right. With source material, he's, you know, he loves chili dogs. He's running and catching rings. And there's a loop de loop, <laughs> and you know, when he jumps on a spring, it makes the sound effect. The, the That's teenage, awesome. Teenage Eggman is playing like a handheld thing, and like it keeps making Sonic video game noises and music, which is pretty cool. My one gripe is that they do a they do the flashback when they're showing like Tails' origin, and it's supposed to look like the Genesis game, but they clearly didn't hire anybody who like knows how to draw pixel art. <laughs> <'Cause> it's like <laughs> I see what you did here. You took a couple of textures, but then everything that you drew looks so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is very clearly drawn by somebody who was like, "All right, I'm going to draw Sonic." Yeah, but make it look like. Like an old video game. Like, all right, I got yeah, you. Yeah, I, I can do that. Yeah, sure, I can no do problem. that. No problem. But, you know, if that's a, a small gripe for... Uh, it, it's a fun show. Uh, the, the voice acting's... The voice acting's all good. Knuckles is a little weird. Um, the regular Knuckles and, like, the regular universe sounds like... He has so few lines and there's so much action going on when he's talking. He sounds like he's really big, dumb, stupid Knuckles. But it's okay. the same actor doing his voice in the future where he doesn't really sound like that because there's not as much action happening when he's fighting. And that's the other thing that's really good. The, the action choreography is magnificent. It's that's really, awesome. really fun to watch the action stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a fun show. I highly recommend it. I, I can't imagine it has any bearing on Sonic Frontiers at all whatsoever because it's all multiversal stuff. So none of it really matters anyway. <laughs> sure, sure. But uh, who knows? Maybe there is some sort of weird crossover thing. I I don't know. I don't have any interest in Sonic Frontiers. But this was uh, this is pretty fun. We'll see if Ellie sticks with it. I'm she's so into it that she showed it like it was her pick for family time tonight. So she showed it to you know my wife and uh, John for her family time pick tonight. That's like, pretty oh, awesome. Yeah, that's pretty great. All right. You got anything else cooking, or should I jump into my list and then we can? No, go nuts. Live the dream. All right. All right. First things first, I did buy Donut Dodo. <laughs> it's fucking great. It's <laughs> fucking great. It's really hard. I can't sure. beat like a single round yet. I mean, like, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, when I just want to like the original arcade Donkey Kong around would be like all four stages. I haven't yeah. gotten through the last stage yet in the first round of the game. It's it's wow. Donkey Kong arcade hard. <laughs> wow. It's burger time hard. It's great. Uh, I, I freaking love it. I love it so much. I bought it twice. I got it on <laughs> VCS and I was like, well, this is great. I love it. And then I saw it was on sale on the switch and I was like, fuck it. I'm buying it here, too. <laughs> So I can play it anywhere I want. Uh, <laughs> it's great. I I just I I can't. Mm. Music's great. It looks the part. It looks like a modernized ancient arcade game. It's freaking wonderful. Love that it. that's outstanding. It, it makes me so happy. Um, and it makes me happy to have like you know stuff on my VCS, which I I spent a decent sure. amount of time on my VCS this week. I got um. 
Uh, Atari 50 came out on the VCS yesterday. So December 20th, it finally landed on VCS. Okay. Uh, it's the joystick controller plays wonderfully on the new games. I, well, the ones that I tried, I just tried the, the, the breakout one. Um, but even on the, the, the retro stuff, it still does that th- thing where it's all shaky. And I finally got an explanation for it. Um, I, I'm in the Atari VCS discord and okay. I don't usually do, you know, get involved a whole lot uh, because there's just, there's a bunch of people in there and they're very into what they're, what they're doing. But I, sure. I was playing it, um, was it tech. Where was it? Uh, troubleshooting. That's where I put it. So I was playing uh, the Atari 50 and the, there's an, an exclusive game on the VCS version of it, which is a uh, circus Atari. I, I oh yeah. Circus yeah. Atari. Yeah. Um, and I, I actually posted about that on uh, uh, Twitter, and Stephen, who we interviewed on the show, responded. was like, yeah, when we were making it for the VCS, and we had, like, this little bit of extra time, we're like, oh, we can put an extra game in there. What's the best game we can grab to showcase the, the spinny controller? Circus Atari. <laughs> the choice was obvious. So, yeah, that's not even I'm, a question. I'm playing that, and um, the uh, it was doing the same thing that it was doing on when I bought like the older breakout where it's just sitting perfectly still and the paddle is like vibrating back and forth. Yeah. So somebody, um, Dafpa who seems to be, uh, running a lot of the, uh, tech stuff for Atari, uh, got back to me on the, um, uh, the, the, what's it? The discord. And they said, no, I have the same issue. The 2600 ROMs don't have adjustments for paddle sensitivity. So right now those games are just picking up the data input of more precise controllers, and that's a bit jittery. These ROMs are used to more crude input data, but even back in the day, I remember my paddles being janky and jittery if you had a bad paddle set, so always covet that one paddle that didn't jitter. So it's just the fact that these old, like, the old ROMs are running exactly how they'd run on the 2600, but because this modern technology is so much more digitally precise, I guess, just its very existence is like causing vibrations, which is weird. It's a strange hmm. thing that I feel like should be fixed, but the VCS audience is so small. It's like, I guess I, I understand that it's yeah, not. and it, it doesn't really affect gameplay. It's just one of those things that I look at and say, well, that kind of stinks. But either way, it just seems like Atari Fifty was like made for um, the VCS. I I didn't need to spend the money on it. I actually threw it on a credit card. Um, not that I have much on my credit cards either right now, sure. but it was a limited time for like the first week is 10 bucks off. And, uh, it was just such Atari 50 was such an important game for me this year. And I, the chance to have it on Atari hardware, I just thought was a really fantastic thing. So I made that, I made that happen. And there's also like a big sale happening on the VCS shop right now. So I also sprung for a deeply discounted copy of Atari mania. Oh, nice. Um, this is one that I had really wanted to try this year. And I just, I never felt like spending the money on it. I was like, sure. I want this, but I haven't seen a lot of reviews. It seems like a really cool idea. It seems right up my alley, but I, I just got to wait for it to be on sale or something. And then it was on sale on the uh for i don't know it was a bunch off it was pretty cheap it was only like 12 bucks or something yeah so i decided to pull the trigger on it i've only played a little bit of it uh this morning because i had a bunch of work to do but i wanted to try and at least play a little bit to talk about on the show tonight uh and it's really weird it's it's the music's really great it's got a great personality the writing's pretty cool so far and it really is very and people were comparing it to warioware and it's very warioware but it's like WarioWare, but also all the micro games are mashups of two different Atari games. So like, that's cool. You're the first the first set of them that I went through. You are this like uh, caretaker of the Atari Museum, okay. and you go into work, and uh, there's this like dark pixel thing in the middle of the floor, and so. Um, this dark pixel thing sucks up. Millie the Millipede, and I forget the guy's name, but the main character from the Sword Quest games. And like uh, so you... Steven Sword Quest. Sure. Let's say it's good old Steve Sword Quest. Um, <laughs> Stevie Sword Quest, you know. 
So, like, you walk over to the pixel thing to, like, try to save them, and you get three boxes. Sword Quest, uh, probably Sword Quest, uh, Earth World, um, Millipede, and Video Olympics. Those three okay. boxes show up, and they all get sucked in there with you. So then you have a lineup of uh, micro games to play. And the first one was just like, you know, here's Pong, survive. And, you know, Pong is Video Olympics. Yeah. But then it's like, uh, then it goes to the next one. It's like, survive. And you're the dude from um, Sword Quest, except you've got a Pong paddle in front of you. And you just walk around trying to avoid arrows from Sword Quest that are flying around the Pong field while trying to not die at Pong. Or you are... uh, you're playing Senate or you're playing millipede as uh you're playing millipede and there's a game of, you know, that little field at the bottom where you can move yeah. the millipede, right? You can't go all the way up the screen. You can only go so far. So that area that you're in, there's a game of pong happening. So you have to play millipede <laughs> while avoiding the ball that's flying at you. It's that's really pretty cool. Over. My, my gripe with it so far is that um, just like WarioWare, sometimes it's difficult to tell what they want you to do. Like, yeah. The micro game starts and I'm like, I have no clue why I failed that. I didn't even, I, I didn't understand what they wanted me to do here. Um, but that's, yeah, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. You just get, you, you get multiple chances, you know, to, to beat enough stages to get to the boss uh, and, and go from there. My other Well, and that's also is- part of like, part of the charm right is like going back and it's sort somewhat um padding the replay value but also like i'm gonna go back and try and figure this one out because this was a neat little thing and you need to do them more than once like i beat that after it took me like four tries i kept getting to the last to to the boss of it and then dying uh and because you have you have like i think then the first you know stage thing you have five tries but there's okay. a, there's i think you have to get through 10 mini games and you can only die five times before you have to start over again um so like you can lose a micro game but you get to keep going but if you lose five of them then you get kicked out and you have to start over again mm. kind of a thing so i don't know it's uh, the controls are a little weird i first started playing it with the joystick and for some great for some games it was great, but like it didn't have twist controls for any of the pong stuff. Okay. Which kind of sucks. And like there there's like a dead zone in the middle of that joystick that can be a little bit of a bitch. So I yeah. switched over to the regular controller, and even then the controls are just a little off. They're not as precise mm. as you want them to be for something like this. Yeah. But still it's it was really fun. It's really clever. It's got a great personality. Um, it's just, I understand why it didn't catch on because sure. even, it, no, not even just on the VCS, it's on every platform and it didn't really set the world on fire because a lot of its charm has to deal with you knowing what the fuck sword quest is. And that's not, like most that's not a don't. ton of the, uh, of the modern gaming market anymore. Like Millie, the millipede. Yeah. Millie Bear. Like these aren't. You know, this isn't Mario and Sonic we're talking about here. These are you got to know Atari, and that's as kinda... much as as much as we would love for them to be household names. They're they're just not. I'll tell you what it is. It's a really fun follow up to Atari Fifty. So if you play yeah. through Atari Fifty and then you like learn the history of Atari, then play this. That's kind of cool. <laughs> that's what I'll say about that. That makes sense. So yeah, that's what I've been up to with my VCS. It's it's been a busy busy week for the for the old VCS, which is they just released um their financials, which are pretty grim. Okay, yeah, Atari's not doing very well right now, which isn't exactly yeah. a surprise. My read of the situation, everyone's yelling doom and gloom, like oh they've discontinued the VCS, and it's like well they haven't discontinued it. They're looking for a different manufacturing option. And my guess is because, you know, they said they're not in any danger of running out of systems, so so stock is going to maintain. It's like, I'm pretty sure they cut their contract for manufacturing because they don't need any more systems. Yeah. Probably really well stocked on them, especially considering how few of them they're selling. Uh, I can't imagine that they need to be spending the money on manufacturing more systems right now. Um, But yeah, their hardware sales are not looking great. Uh, I think those... 
this seems to be a company that has a lot of lofty ideas and some of them are really good, but some of them are kind of gross. Like they've been doubling down, tripling down on all this blockchain NFT garbage. And like, yeah. that's, mm, it's no. just desperation. It's gross is what it is. And, and they seem yeah. to be really, really into that market, but they're also doing well. Like their software sales are actually up. You know, it's not enough to make enough money overall to solve all their problems, but they still lost a butt ton of money this year, but their software sales are doing well. Atari 50 has done well. Atari Mania did yeah. well enough. Their recharged games have done really well for them. That's what they need to be focusing on, not uh, everything else that they're doing. Like, yeah. It, stop it with the speaker hats and the limited edition watches and all this other weird shit. Like, <laughs> I mean, I do love a good speaker hat. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> right. Who doesn't love the old speaker hat? Love a good speaker hat. Oh, right. But... That's who doesn't love them. Everybody around you when you wear it. <sighs> yeah. There's a reason headphones exist, guys. Nobody else That's wants right. to listen to what's coming out of your head. Oh, no. Apparently, everybody at the fucking store would have you think otherwise mm -hmm. is that is that a thing that is only like up by me or is that happening by you too where like everybody just talks on speakerphone on their phones all day when they're out in public yeah that i mean that's been going on for years huh? oh god i hate it i hate it so much so anyway, the, Atari seems to said that they're putting new focus a new focus on trying different ways to market the system, and I'd I'd like to see that happen. I'm I wrote up a whole thing that's going to go up after um after my vacation next week about a bunch of things that I think Atari should be doing uh to kind of like make a future for the VCS because look the system doesn't they don't need to reinvent the system right the system doesn't no. need more power they don't need to <clears throat> iterate generations ever it's powerful enough to do the kind of games that Atari makes forever right mm -hmm. you can make games like Donut Dodo or not that they made that one but like that Combinera um that shit now that Atari 50 is up and running on the system they've got great emulation tools for all of their past systems so yeah the system is more than powerful enough to carve out that niche that i was saying the intellivision miko was going to carve out you know like oh new modern takes on classic style games i love yeah. that that could be the atari vcs but like their pricing is insane i mean you know the only reason i have one is because i got it on an insane deal like yeah three four hundred dollars for this thing Nobody's, no, that's that's absurd. Yeah, nobody's paying that. Even two hundred dollars for the unit with no controllers. The freaking controllers. Why anybody wants it to begin with? Yeah, that's like, those those cartridges. And I know that it's ridiculous that they're still selling out. But those like limited edition cartridges that are like over a hundred dollars for an Atari cartridge. Yeah, I feel like they're really overestimating their they're overestimating their value too much overestimating their value to a degree i think was definitely a smart move to be like no there is value in atari's atari's name and we're going to prove that but i think they've gone a little too far overboard with it and they just need to find a better way to get more of that system into the hands of the people like me who would play it just because it's an atari system and then use that to kind of keep their branding alive i don't know it's it's a weird situation but i'm happy with my vcs i love that i have atari 50 on it and i'm looking forward to spending more time with atari mania yeah it sounds really awesome um i got my limited run copy of save me mr taco in the mail oh yeah kind of forgot that was a thing but the definitive edition that the guy actually made uh it's been out in the eShop forever and then i yeah. saw they were doing a physical one i was like fuck it i'll buy that that was like a year ago and uh or way earlier this year and it showed up in the mail today and i haven't i haven't tried it yet i haven't had that kind of time but i'm glad i have it i'm looking forward to giving it a go because i really wanted to like that game more than i did and um i think a lot of the improvements he was talking about on the show with us back then uh would make a huge difference for me so i'll be giving that a, a shot in the new year um let's see the only other thing i wanted to mention was did you the bullshit with the Final Fantasy picture pixel remasters. Did you see this nonsense? I did not see what the bullshit was. I just saw that they were coming out. Um, 
I I failed to see what the bullshit was, so explain to me what was bullshit. Well, first things first, um, they uh, they didn't announce that they they dropped the announcement with zero fanfare for the physical editions for PlayStation and Switch uh, at one o'clock in the morning. Just dropped them out there, extremely limited quantities. Good luck. The okay. standard edition. Okay, not the special fancy edition that comes with vinyl records and art books and all that stuff. Just the standard edition for, I think, PS4 and Switch was 75 goddamn dollars. For Final Fantasy what? One through six. That's a hell of a deal. Plus $25 shipping. A hundred bucks for those... Look, (laughs) this... I find it strange, if we're being honest, Chris, I find it strange that you find that to be ridiculous, but had no problem with the Super Mario All-Stars thing being a $60 game. I mean... The, whatever the Switch thing was. Final Fantasy VI alone is a fucking masterpiece of a game. It absolutely is. Five, really, really fucking good. Four, really, really fucking good. You're talking 40-hour games. That That is a completely fair price, in my estimation. $75 for all those, for all those old games. It was sixty dollars for three Mario but, games that weren't very good, and you were you're like, the one, "You're the one who's always arguing that older games should lose their values." I do think they should lose <laughs> their value, but that is obviously not the fucking world we live in. I don't know that I would pay that much for it, but that does seem like looking at the way the market is currently for like collections and all of that stuff. For those games in particular, with the work that has gone into them, um, to update them, the pixel, the pixel perfect, whatever, blah, 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 whatever the fuck mm-hmm. that means, uh, seventy five bucks does not seem that crazy, like at all. So that's more than Final Fantasy VII remake. Sure, that's way above standard pricing. Okay, see my, I, I didn't I mean, say that the. You know the three game. It's deal, ten bucks Mario, above standard pricing, but ten dollars above standard pricing. <laughs> That's fucking nuts for a bunch of old games. And it's there's no extras in here. We're not talking like Cowbunga Collection. We're we're talking here's the games they've been you know redrawn, but you know we're still sticking with that shitty font that everyone hates, and we're only doing <laughs> it in an extremely limited capacity. The physical Physically. copies are incredibly limited. Sure. Not for any real reason, just they are. Now, that triple pack of Mario games, no, that wasn't a spectacular price. I thought it was worth it for me personally, but I didn't say, no, everybody should go out and buy it. That's a great value. <laughs> it was a good value for me, and that was, here's three games for standard retail price. They didn't go above, they didn't go below. That's standard retail price. Okay, I get it. I don't necessarily agree with it, but I looked at it and said, that value proposition, that's enough for me. This is not standard retail pricing. This is higher than, this is even higher than the standard pricing for the latest AAA fuck you extravaganza that's loaded (laughs) with microtransactions, right? This is $5 above the latest and greatest. This is $5 more than God of War. Sure. To get all these pixel remasters. That's an insane price. That's I an mean, absurd price. It's a lot of money, but it is six very long, very good games. Well, I all right, I won't say six very good games. Um, it's at least five very good games. The first Final Fantasy is a little fucking long in the tooth at this point. Um yeah, I, I got to be honest. I don't think that's crazy. I it would not spend the money on it, like, personally. Um, 
but I'm shocked and amazed that you're totally defending this. I can't believe that. like it's just you're blowing my mind here. <laughs> I, All right, it, I, that, it that, should that's it that, should that's your opinion. That is stupid. That is just saying no. <laughs> fuck it. I don't care. The games just cost whatever the fuck we want now. I want that, this well, game, but this that's game, what they are. That, I mean, they I mean that, are. But this is like this <laughs> I is, wish this is I this wish is that were the case. And out of standards, this is just like no fuck the standards. We want to charge seventy five dollars for this this pack of uh, games. They're already done. You know, we're gonna sell them all piecemeal uh, as, as digital things. And then we're going to package them all together and make this just absurdly expensive uh, thing. Extremely limited quantities on top of that. Like, why are these I, extremely limited quantities? I would not pay more than 20 bucks for this. I, that's me personally. I would not pay more than 20 bucks for this. I think anything more than $20 for this kind of thing is uh, absurd. I think it's absurd that uh, when my aunt just bought Mario Kart uh, 8 for KD on the Switch, that mm -hmm. it was full price. I think that's uh -huh. absurd. I think Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze on the Switch, it being fucking $60 is, or 40 or 50 whatever, whatever fucking 60, price it is. Yeah, it was more yeah. expensive than the I, Wii U version. That is insane. Yeah, I think that is insanity. Um, however, I, I don't think anybody should buy it, but people are fucking gonna. And if people are going to buy it, um, I don't oh, it think it's almost immediately. I don't think it's as crazy a price, perhaps as I would have expected. Well, I mean, that's just for the standard edition. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much the limited edition was. I didn't even sniff it. Well, but, but let me let me. I cause I've got my phone here in front of me, so I'm just curious because these were phone games originally yeah. like mobile games right so uh, mobile final, and steam yes final fantasy uh let's go with six um let's see final fantasy six the ultimate pixel remaster uh on ios currently is 17.99 for final fantasy six okay on uh -huh. on mobile final fantasy five is also 18 bucks four is 15 bucks or no 18 bucks for the pixel remaster because there's a couple versions of that i'm just i'm curious if any of them are cheaper final fantasy 3 no 18 i'm bucks. sure this bundle is going to be less expensive than buying them all piecemeal uh, final fantasy 2 is 12 bucks and final fantasy um oh god i'm never going to be able to find it with all the different final fantasy <laughs> things that are on here uh no the so Final Fantasy one and two are twelve, um, and then f three, four, five, and six are eighteen. So, like, I'm surprised it's as cheap as it is, because eighteen, because just for the four, um, for the eighteen dollar games, you're already mm -hmm. at seventy two bucks. So yeah, it's a hundred bucks for all these games on your phone. I don't know, like I, I it's fucking dumb. It's real it dumb. It, it's fucking dumb. I I I'm, I'm I hate, surprised. I hate the like, pricing. I hate that it's limited. I hate that it's twenty five dollars for shipping of a single, like just the standard edition. Is it twenty five dollars shipping? It's coming the, directly from Japan. I guess I don't know. That that why would is be there the no only American reason. Distributor? Why, yeah. why is this being done this way? There's so much demand for it. I yeah. don't understand it. Square's a fucking weird company. They really are. They're and a weird, weird ass company. I mean, when you break it down like you broke it down, it it, it does it I suppose it makes a degree of sense, but <laughs> I mean again, I I would consider purchasing um if I get a backbone or whatever for my phone, I would want to purchase um Final Fantasy VI. I'm probably going to get six. Yeah, when it comes out, I'm probably yeah. just going to grab six digitally. I would love to be able to have something like this physically, but that doesn't seem to be an option because they sold out immediately, even though they fucking just shadow dropped them in the middle of the night. <sighs> Was it a worldwide physical release? 
Like, uh, are these worldwide? No, this is for the American one. Okay. All the right. American one dropped at one a like around one a.m. Eastern. Oh, so it would have been like ten o'clock West Coast time, or no, three hours back. Eleven, twelve, one. Yeah, no, ten o'clock. I mean, that's still pretty late. That's still pretty fucking stupid to launch that's still your pretty late, Final Fantasy but... pre-order 10 o'clock at night at the earliest. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's weird. It's a little weird. I don't have an explanation for it. And again, I don't think anybody should be buying this shit because the only reason companies keep fucking doing this shit is because people keep buying them. Yeah. Like, I... Uh... I Power I to the people. It for a second, and then I saw the price, <laughs> and I was like, "No, I I can't justify this. I because I'm not going to play all of them. Like the only one I'm really genuinely interested in replaying right now is six, and I'm not spending a hundred bucks to play a slightly better looking version of Final Fantasy VI. Like, yeah, it was I just included. The original version was included in the Super NES Classic Edition for crying out loud. That system cost what this game costs that yeah. system with super metroid and mario world and final fantasy 3 and earthbound and star fox and the unreleased star fox that system cost around what this cost like what like ten dollars more yeah fucking i mean but but shit. so much so much of it comes down to personal preference mm -hmm. right because if they release like let's just call it the pixel perfect uh, Metroid and Super Metroid. Just those two games. In a physical cart for the Switch and it was 75 bucks, you would buy it in a heartbeat. I would no, I would absolutely not buy that in a heartbeat. You wouldn't? If you're talking NES Metroid and Super Metroid remastered on a physical cart for $75, I would pass. Or at oh, least I God. would think about passing. <laughs> you would, would not fucking pass even a little. And you know you wouldn't. And I, that's okay. No, that's just it. I didn't buy the Game Boy Advance Metroid uh, thing. The Was it the NES Classic Edition Metroid? I didn't buy that. I didn't buy that till years later, and I bought it secondhand for cheap. Because there, there's lines I won't cross. Like, I don't care which... If, if that's the only way you're going to sell that, that's going to suck, but... I'm going to have yeah. to live without it because $75 to play those two games. No, 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 no. But I, I could justify the, it. What's the price that you would go to on that? Would you go 60? Just those two? Yeah. Super Metroid and just skipping Metroid 2 entirely. Just Metroid sure. and Super Metroid. Oh, fuck it. Put Metroid God. 2 on there. Put All Metroid right, 2 on there. Now you've got remastered Metroid 1, 2, and 3. I would begrudgingly and choke back the vomit on 60 if they if that was literally the only option. I would be fine paying 50. I would prefer to pay 40. But you would pay 70 if it, that's what it cost. No. If it was $70, Even if it was $60, I would choke back the bile and make it happen. $70, that's too much. It's too I much. don't know, man. I don't know. But and the but the only reason I even bring that up is because people there are for Final Fantasy psychopaths. Um, this is a this is a fucking deal. Like, of course, this sold out. Again, I think it's fucking lunacy. I I think it's absurd to spend this much money. I'm actually sort of surprised that it's as cheap as it is. If, like, just being honest. For, I just, because I just, because well, I don't think that, I don't even think Square looked at it and said, I don't think we can get away with charging more than $75 for this, for just the basic one. I because mean, I, it's Square. I am shocked that Final Fantasy VI is not 75 bucks. That's like, that's, you know. If we're, if we're being completely open, that seems like a square thing to do. Because, again, keep in mind, like you said earlier, and it, it, it's an interesting way that you said it, uh, that this is like $15 more than Final Fantasy VII Remake. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And that is incorrect. Final Fantasy VII Remake is three fucking games, each of them $60. True. So that game is $180. Oh, they're going to be seventy dollars a piece because that's the new standard. Oh, but yeah, when by the time those ones come out, so I mean, we're looking at two hundred dollars for the Final Fantasy VII remake, and nobody bats an eye because it's split up into quote unquote three games. But you fuck it, it's one game. It's one game. You fucking you sure split it up into three. An eye? I feel like people were batting a lot of eyes. I don't know. I don't. I, it's still fucking sold like stupid. Oh, they were buying them, but they were batting their eyes <laughs> while they were buying them. But that's the thing. Like, as until people vote with their pocketbooks, this is what's going to happen. You know? Like, this mm-hmm. is just what's going to happen. I was looking... I, I go to Wawa and get breakfast, um, usually on the weekends, right? Saturday and Sunday, I go to Wawa, I get a cup of coffee, and I get uh, eggs and sausage crumbles and uh, their their chipotle sauce and I get a donut for the children. And uh, at the Wawa that I go to, uh, there is somebody who drives a like 88 or 89 Jeep Grand Wagoneer with the fucking woody panels on the side. And I fucking love that car. I don't know if you know what that looks like off the top of your head, Chris, but like a late eighties, early nineties Jeep Grand Wagoneer is just it's fucking awesome. I love that thing. So I went on to take a look at prices. Just out of curiosity, I wonder how much it would cost to get, you know, a late eighties, early nineties Grand Wagoneer. Okay. And I mistakenly just typed in Jeep Grand Wagoneer for sale because I forgot that last year they put out a new Grand Wagoneer. All right. The new Jeep Grand Wagoneer as a brand new car is sold out. uh, When it first came out, it was sold out almost everywhere. And that car retails for over a hundred thousand dollars for a car. Wow. And it was sold out. The new Broncos are like $80,000, and they were sold out. You still have to get on a fucking waiting list for that shit. Because as much as we're in a fucking recession, depression, and people are broke, and nobody wants to work, and all of those things that you hear on television and whatnot, people are still buying shit. Uh, Apparently in record fucking numbers. So until that changes... Uh, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. It sucks. I still look at any standard. I still look at any standard edition game that's priced well above the standard as gross. And this yeah. is that. This is what that is. So yeah, it 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 grossed me the fuck out. You can currently buy the bundle of them all on Steam for seventy four dollars and eighty two cents for the digital one. So yeah. What the hell? I, the do whole you thing think is gross, and they're all they're all gonna die? <laughs> do you th- do you think twenty dollars, like I, give or take, you know, tax and whatever? Do you think twenty dollars for Final Fantasy VI remake is out of control? <clears throat> I'd have to see. I'd have to see more of the remake to be perfectly honest with you. Like I like that it runs in widescreen. I hate the font. Yeah. Um. I don't know. But, like, because that's also the thing, like, a lot of these remakes and remasters and stuff, like, even the the old school games, like, how much was the fucking Zelda one on Switch? That was 40? 60 bucks, I think. That was was 60 dollars. That was one game. That was a Game Boy game. It was. That was 60 dollars. But it wasn't, like, yeah, that was a lot to pay for that, for sure. (laughs) That's, That's one game. But... This that is, was an actual remake. These are just this is remasters. Six games. <clears throat> well, I sure. I it's just yeah. I mean, again, I'm not defending it. I'm. Just, it's just. I. It sounds like I'm defending it. I'm not. Don't buy this. It's fucking absurd. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> like, put on your your fucking eye patch and get a parrot. Like, this is it's dumb. But, uh, yeah, it's wild. I'm surprised people were upset <laughs> or surprised. I guess I don't know. You know, honestly, the thing that I'm sh- the thing that surprises me the most is the timing. 
and the then the limited quantities that that's super weird the limited the, quantities is, is uh that you're just inflating your market like i get that part yeah but they're not getting anything out of selling them secondhand oh like, sure th- why wouldn't they like why isn't this i can buy the cowabunga collection in stores why can't i buy this in stores it's final freaking fantasy like do they really think there's so little demand for these things? I mean, clearly they do because they didn't put them on consoles until people begged them for a year. Yeah, like, I mean, maybe, Pixel maybe they're that out of touch. Coming to mobile and Steam right where you want them. And everyone's like, <laughs> right where everyone fuck demanded. What are you talking about PlayStation, <laughs> Switch, please. They're not even releasing it on Xbox. They're and not. Like, they're not even, it's not on Xbox. It's just PlayStation and Switch. It's like, guys, these are the Final Fantasy games. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Why aren't you putting them places? What is wrong with you? God damn. And it's like, it's, it's uh, just, just boggles my mind. Just like the whole, like the physical Final Fantasy VII copies. Like, oh, Final Fantasy VII finally comes out on the Nintendo platform. We're going to release it physically. Only in Japan. What, do you think there aren't fans in America? Like, yeah, do you, do you think know. people wouldn't buy that off of a Best Buy store shelf? Because they fucking would. Probably. <laughs> It's just like the whole cloud only Kingdom Hearts thing. What? Yeah. What? I I, I don't get it. Square Enix is insane. All right, we gotta yeah. move this along. Uh, we have not done the Game Boy Advance listener starter kits. Oh we shit! Do Read it a couple weeks quickly. ago. So here we go. Uh, the Game Boy Advance starter kits from our listeners. Tiny Matt. Uh, he goes with Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga at twenty six dollars and fifty seven cents. Uh surprised how cheap this is compared to everything else on game boy advance and it's probably my favorite gba game it is i think he uh, was the one who requested we did that on uh way back uh yeah. plus golden sun for 38.44 it's a little slow to start but damn it if it doesn't get freaking great golden oh, sun so just good. finished the story started by this game mega man zero two for 22.97 it's cheaper than the first mega man zero zero game and i think it's better than zero one Super Mario Advance for 11 bucks they added so much neat stuff to this version of mario 2 and i still think it's the best way to play mario 2 I mostly agree with that. That's a um, yeah, it's a good list. Yeah, you have to listen. The, 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 there's too many voiceovers in that one. <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah, fair. ninety eight dollars. Nah, just what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Uh, so yeah, ninety eight, ninety eight, ninety eight. Well done, Chrono Din. Man, great choices. I had a hard time putting the Mario Advance games on there because being re releases of other games. But then I went and included Final Fantasy IV Advance. So. Circle the Moon for twenty four ninety nine. You really need to have one of the Castlevania Advance games on here, and this is the cheapest one by a pretty good margin. The first one that came on the system, and it's still a really great game. Final Fantasy IV Advance PAL version for $20.83. Still one of my absolute favorite RPGs, and this version fixed a lot from the original, including some balance issues and the script, since translations back in 1999, 1991 were questionable. <laughs> Not the cheapest Final Fantasy Advance game, but I love this one more than five, so it's worth it. Mario Kart Super Circuit for sixteen ninety nine. If you want Mario Kart Portable, go eight deluxe on the Switch. But this one's still great and impressive. What they did with the GBA hardware, Mario vs Donkey Kong for eighteen eighty five. I mean, yeah, buy it. It's not quite the Game Boy, Game Boy. We said GBC entry, but I think you meant original Game Boy. But still, yeah. Super Dodgeball Advance for ten fifty. That was on my list. Love this game. Tons of fun for this price compared to other GBA games. Absolutely. Tony Hawk Four PAL version five dollars and ninety two cents. It was amazing what they did with the Tony Hawk games on GBA and astounding that they're this cheap. Definitely worth picking up and a steal for under six bucks. $98.08. Yep. Good list. Let's see. We've got some, uh, let's see. Oh. Uh, wow. Agreed. The Pixel Remaster is wonderful. I just really wish the mobile version had controller support. Wow. the con- You can't use a controller on the mobile version? Oh, never mind. I take it wow. all back. Fuck you, Square. <laughs> Good lord. All right, Rumble Mins, uh, Golden Sun, PAL for 2613, a great RPG series that isn't really available anywhere else. Wario Land 4, PAL for 1736. I think the Wario Land games always seem like a great fit on GBA, and Wario Land 4 is a fantastic entry. Tony Hawk 2, PAL for $4.47. While not as definitive as its bigger 3D sibling, the 2D Tony Hawk games on the GBA were well done in their own right, and for under 5 bucks, it's worth picking up. Mario Golf Advance Tour, PAL version for $23.44. I'd love to include the Japanese version instead of the PAL, and it's only $3, but I don't know if it's translated. And I think being able to read the dialogue is in Camelot's Golf RPG is worth the $24. Yes. Mario vs. Donkey Kong Japanese version, $2.90. Mario Kart 
Mario vs. Donkey Kong is not the best mo mobile Donkey Kong game, but for under three bucks for the Japanese version, it's an easy pickup and a great action puzzler. And Advance Wars Pal for twenty four fifty. I had to decide between fitting Advance Wars or Fire Emblem the list, and Advance Wars was a bit cheaper and fits the slot of a tactical goodness to a T. Nintendo isn't going to ever say anything about the re-release. You should definitely pick this up <laughs> as one of your first GBA games. $98. Yeah, it's never coming out. Cents. It's never coming out. It's been canceled. I, I don't think that's true. Uh, let's see. Duroc Pig. King Mars Chain Memories for 1088. Ninja Turtles for 1697. Mario Kart Super Circuit for 1699. Sonic Advance 2 for 2355. Circle of Moon 2499. Virtual Tennis $6.47. Comes to 99.85. That's a pretty good list. That's a good Trash list, yeah. Man. Pal takes the cake today. Everything below is that region because it's just a better deal. Advance Wars for 23 bucks. You have to play this if you own a Game Boy Advance. Pretty soon there won't be another way to buy it either. We Virtual Console is shutting down soon, and we still don't have Reboot Camp. Fire Pro Wrestling for $9. Portable Wrestling, 4-player. Only major limiting factor of the game is sound, likely because of the Game Boy Advance. Lilo and Stitch for 8 bucks. Metal Slug huh. meets Disney. Huh. Alright, I'll huh. look into that. Yeah. <laughs> Color me intrigued. Kuru Kuru Kururin for $15. The best way I can describe this game is piloting helicopter blades through a maze. Fantastic puzzler that the U.S. never got, except for Wii U Virtual Console, which again, will soon leave us. Sonic Advance and Choo Choo Rocket combo pack for 12 bucks. I didn't know that existed. Excellent no. deal. Sonic Advance is one of the better Sonic titles in GBA, and Choo Choo Rocket is always fun. Mario Kart Super Circuit for $15. Bucks. It's, got, it's Mario Kart. It's got polish. Wario Land 4 for 17 Excellent platformer. Probably the best game in the Wario Land series. Ripping Friends, World's Most Manly Men, for $1. Total $100. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a fucking Adult Swim? It was, what? yeah. It was from... a John Crick Falusi thing? Uh, yeah. Good times. Yeah. Uh, let's fucking see here. He also friends. said, Jesus. the toughest cuts beyond the obvious A-listers were Saber Wolf. This is rare, doing fun and quirky things as a pseudo-sequel to his Commodore 64 title from the past. Lady Sia, solid action-adventure platformer, story's a little weak. Astro Boy the Omega Factor. Sleeper yeah, Hit from Treasure. So starring a very, yep, that game is amazing. Uh, let's see. I'd pay Anybody 75 else? bucks for that. I'll tell you what. All right, reformat. We've got uh, Super Dodgeball Advance for $5.90. You remember Super Dodgeball, right? Well, this is that game. For some reason, they stripped out all the Kunio Kun <laughs> stuff from it, despite having the license, but otherwise, it's the same game. It's fun. It's only $5.90 for the European version, which these days is the price of a loaf of bread. So, I mean, you could have bread, or you could have Super Dodgeball on your GBA. I think we all know what the responsible choice here is, and it sure as hell ain't bread. That's right. Uh, Super Monkey Ball Jr. <clears throat> for North, North American one for $7.38. It's Super Monkey Ball, one of the Game Boy Advance. If you like Super Monkey Ball, then you're gonna like this. If you don't like Super Monkey Ball, then you're wrong, and you need to reevaluate your life choices. It's pretty simple. Ten I do not cents. like Super Monkey Ball. Well, go rethink your life choices. I will spoken. not. <laughs> Robotech, the Macross Saga, the European version. Okay, I lied a little back at the start. That list with Minish Cap and a bunch of shovelware. Oh, right, he said something earlier. He was just gonna do, um... Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he said he did a Minish Cap and a bunch of shovel like Tonka on the job, Shamu's Deep Sea Adventures. Okay. <laughs> because uh, Minish Cap is that good. All right, let's see. Uh, it was actually going to be Minish Cap, this game, and then a bunch of shovelware. Robotech the Macross Saga is a fan fucking tastic shooter for the GBA, which follows the uh, Macross Saga. You know, the stuff that made it into the TV show that we all watched as kids in the 80s. Most of the game is you piloting a Veritech in a side scrolling shmup. The Veritech can transform into either a fighter jet a giant robot or the guardian mode which is a jet with arms and legs and is a lot cooler than that sounds and you can choose which character mecha you play from the characters in the series with each one having different skill levels and mechs in that sense the game is very similar to the amazing super famicom game macross scrambled valkyrie but then this game also has some levels where you play as destroid which no other macross shmup has ever done the destroids are non-transformable ground-based mecha essentially tanks on legs or missile launches on legs. It depends on which one you choose. So for those levels, the game actually switches to an isometric view and you play that way. It's really cool and keeps the gameplay fresh. Alright, this is really long. I just gotta, I just gotta read the rest of the titles. Uh, F-Zero Maximum Velocity, a European version for 1205. Sword of Mana, the European version for 2405. And, like, dude wrote a novel here. If you're on our Discord, <laughs> go read what he wrote. <laughs> it's a lot. 
and Minish Cap, the European version, for forty dollars and sixty-one cents, comes to one hundred dollars and seventy-two cents. He went over budget, but I'll, you know, I'll allow it. We'll allow it. And that was that was everything. That was everyone, everything that everyone submitted. Sorry for not reading that stuff sooner. My humblest apologies. It's been a really weird couple of weeks for me and Dan. Uh, yeah, but things appear to be leveling out in the not too distant future. So, hooray! Uh, what's uh, what's next on the list? Uh, you'll find out at the end of the episode because it's our next episode. Okay, it's GameCube. <laughs> okay, I thought no, left. I know I I I was I was working on it, but uh, I I was trying to like I was teasing for the audience. Oh, oh, I forgot that it was next week though. So yeah, well, was a bad tease on my part. All right, yeah, you know, you're a bad tease. Uh, I am. I'm just easy. i like I'm a guaranteed lay first date. Like I'm a bad tease. Well, on that note, we're gonna take ourselves a break. When we come back, we're gonna start the ten, twenty, thirty, forty, and hope it doesn't keep us up too late because we're exhausted. That's right. You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from Geekade.com. Stick around. everyone, Chris here. Podcast listening is free, but podcast creation is not. That's why the Geekade Patreon exists. In an effort to help us pay the bills, we've got a Patreon page set up where you can gain access to our monthly podcast topic schedule, get early access to many of our shows, and more. If you'd like to help support Geekade and keep these shows running week after week, head over to the Geekade Patreon page, linked in the show notes of this very podcast. And now, here's a quick look at some of the other original content, available now from our partners and Geekade.com. First up, Skulljag. How do you say that? I know. It's Skajagger? Skulljagger? Skujagger. Because, well, I mean, <laughs> I'm a master of all things pirate. I know, I'm just reading what you wrote. I know it's Skulljagger. Uh, Is it you know Skulljagger? Is it Skulljagger? I- I believe it's... I've always said Skulljack because I'm American and I don't say things Yaga. Like yeah, it. but it's got, like, those weird... Umlauts? Yeah, it's got weird umlauts, I think. I mean, it's probably uh, Skulljager. Yeah. Skulljager! Here, I'm gonna copy and paste this into the script so you can see it. I'm just gonna put it right here. There you go. <laughs> Skulljager! Skulljager! <laughs> Revolt of the Vistikins! Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I always said Skulljagger when I was a kid, but it's probably Skuljagger, but either way, uh, I am, regardless of any of the, uh, proper pronunciations of, uh, this game, I am, uh, according to Chris, a master of all things pirate. Uh, however, you know who else loves pirates? Uh, that would be Greg and Joe. Thank goodness for that, because in an all-new episode of the SNES podcast, they sat down with Skuljagger, a game known for its thick, thick, beefy, meaty instruction manual, and surprisingly long story about a young man with a magic sword who seeks to defeat a group of pirates and uh, liberate his island. That's right, I said pirates. Find out if... (laughs) Jesus, Chris! (laughs) This is absurd. Fuck you, San Diego. Find out if Skulljager is any good in the SNES podcast, episode 201, Skulljogger. Skulljagger. Skulljagger. <laughs> no, I mean, fuck. I'm sorry, guys. This is... Yeah. SNES podcast is good, and you should listen. <laughs> That's my commercial for them this week. You guys are awesome. We love you. Um, I, I want to listen to it just to find out how they pronounced it. Perfect. That's right. I hope I hope they say it differently every time. <laughs> Speaking of pronouncing things, it has long driven me crazy when people mispronounce things. I do it myself. <laughs> I'm pretty good at mispronouncing things myself, but some things are way too obvious even for me. Like when Super Smash Brothers tells you the name of the game is Super Smash Brothers and you decide to call it Bros instead, well, I die well, a little inside. And, what other um, video... No, mm, mm-hmm. no it, just, it makes me really fucking bad. You play Super Smash Bros? Fuck you. 
No. It I says don't. the name of the game at the title screen. It yells, Super Smash Brothers! It's not Smash Bros. Bro. Bros. It's the Mario Super. Bros. Anyway. Uh, what other video <laughs> That's game right, words Dean. We're I've... talking to you. <laughs> What other game words have I seen butchered over the years, even by semi-official channels? Find out in Stone Age Countdown, Top 5 Mispronunciations, available now on the Stone Age Gamer YouTube channel. YouTube channel. Love YouTube channel. Finally! It's the best. Guansu dudes. Guansu. Guansu. That's what I would say if I had impeccable taste in movies, which I, in fact, do. That's how I know that not only is Surf Ninja's Rob Schneider's uh, second finest work uh, after Deuce Bigelow Male Gigolo, but a genuine master class in 90s filmmaking. It's got surfing, Chris. It's got ninjas, Chris. It's got it all, Chris. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's got those two things. But that's all you need. This what time... What more do you need? What, what more, more do you want to hear? It's Surf Ninjas. Love it. This time, in a theater near you, Sean, Paul, and Chris watch the cinematic masterpiece that is Surf Ninjas End. Enjoy a one-eyed man named Zatch. Leslie Nielsen as a fucking cybernetic warlord, a 30, 30, a 30-year-old Rob Schneider attempting to pass for a high school student, hello fellow young people, and the assertion that money can't buy knives. Don't miss A Theater Near You, episode 22, Surf Ninjas. Goddamn right. For all this and more from us and our partners, be sure to keep your eyes on Geekade.com. School Ninjas. That's the name. It's not Skull Jogger. It's not Skull Jagger. Skull Ninjas. And we're back. I don't care if you... <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. We're back right now! We're back. We've returned. And I just wanted to say that here's something I learned about Surf Ninjas while doing research for our episode. Um, I thought it was just a Game Gear game, but they actually, a year later, made a PC game based on wow. Surf Ninjas. And as far as I can se- tell, it's dead fucking serious. Like... Like there's, they, they... there's no humor in it. It's a beat 'em up, and like you know, the last boss fight's a you know, knockdown, drag out battle with Colonel Chi, who doesn't look anything like Les Nielsen. Like, oh, it's the movie, but there's zero humor involved. Oh, that's weird. That's a bold choice, man. I fucking love Leslie Nielsen, but man, that's a anyway. He was ten. A... He was 10, fantastic 20, 30, 40. in that movie. He was fantastic in that movie. Uh, fantastic is such a strong adjective. It is because it was Le- Leslie for, Nielsen for it's anything associated movie. with skull with with skull ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> here's, the, here's the conclusion. We, I promise we'll get to the 10, 20, 30, 40. But the conclusion we came to is obviously it is not a good movie. No, but it has a very strange level of occasional genuine greatness in it, like. It sticks out like a sore thumb because you're just watching like, I can't believe how stupid this is. I can't believe this got made. And then all of a sudden, something actually genuinely funny will happen. And it's like, what am I watching? How did this movie <laughs> happen? This is so weird. But anyway, that 10, 20, honestly, 30, 40 times. that's the way I feel about Deuce Bigelow, Male Gigolo. There's a couple times in that movie where I There's genuinely genuine laugh comedy in that movie. What a terrible idea, but I've seen that movie twice, long time ago, <laughs> and I remember enjoying it enough the first time to watch it the second time, because it was freaking yeah. funny. Yeah. It shouldn't be, but goddamn Should- if it isn't. Every now and again, Rob Schneider is exactly what you need. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah I said yeah. it. So we're, we're, we're 10, 20, 30, 40 time. This last 10, 20, 30, 40 of the year. We've, right. we've made it, Dan. The December 10, 20, 30, 40. And what a 10, 20, 30, 40 it is. I'm just going to keep saying that. <laughs> so right, let's well, like, go. So fucking don't. Like, I'm unzipped already. Let's go. <laughs> Stand up. So don't play with it. Let's get to work. That's, that's right. Don't just stare at it. Eat it. Jesus. <laughs> so we're going to jump to 10 years. 10 years into the... God damn it. Into the past. <laughs> for 2012. We've got... Uh, we're looking at PlayStation 3, Xbox 360. The Wii U launched last month. We still kicking DS, 3DS, PSP, and Vita. So that's that's what we're looking at. So... That's PS2 a lot. games, I believe, are done. I believe we had our last PS2 game in September. Uh, yeah. So PS3. Let's see what we're cooking with a well until three. Whatever next year's random FIFA release was, right? And just it could dance still happen or any, at any time. Yeah. Where's my December 2012? Let's start from the the, the top here. Obviously, I'm going to skip a bunch of the since these we're at the point in these uh, ten year old sections here where uh, we've determined that they just barfed out so many games digitally oh, and non digitally. So much. We've just got to skip a bunch. So I'm just going to name anything that looks like it was a physical release or it is important. So let's see. There's something called Under Defeat HD. Um, nope. Guilty Gear Double X Accent Core Plus. That is way too many adjectives. <laughs> um, let's I want to be so much better at those games than I am. I really, I just like, I, I like, them I just a like lot. looking at them. I don't want to yeah. play them. I just want to watch people who are better than me play at them. Yeah, they're really cool looking. They do they some are. really, really neat shit with Guilty Gear. I heartily agree. Uh, let's see. The Mass Effect Trilogy, Guardians of Middle Earth. Boy, I wish that was one thing, right? Mass Effect Trilogy, Guardians of Middle Earth. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so wild, like. The Mass Effect trilogy was just given away on uh, PlayStation Plus this month. Wow. Uh, this oh. year. Yeah. Like. For the anniversary. Yeah. I guess so. Ugh. The anniversary of the trilogy. Uh, Far Cry <laughs> 3 came out. There was a Resistance collection. Um, oh, those games were so good. The Walking Dead Telltale series collection. That was um, also really good. Wow, uh, lots of DLC here. Lots of DLC listed. Lots of... Come on, give me a game. Give me a what? fucking game. Oddworld Munch's Odyssey HD. There's Yuck. that game. I um, hate the Oddworld games. What is the game that killed Telltale? Because, like, oh, Telltale was, was the that? biggest thing in the world. Was it the I Borderlands it, one? I don't think it was a game that killed them. I think it was the studio that bought them that killed them. Because, like... I, it seemed like every other week it was Telltale announces oh, a yeah. new thing. And they did the Fable shit, and that was fucking awesome. The Walking Dead games were great. The Batman ones, really good. And then I, they just went away. Let's There's see. There's no more Telltale um, games. Walking Dead. I'm looking at their last games. Uh, Wolf Among Us 2. Walking Dead Final Season. Batman, The Enemy Within, Minecraft Story Mode Season 2, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. I don't remember anybody talking about that Guardians of the Galaxy one or the Game of Thrones one. Did they of do Thrones that ones got too? canceled. Oh, wait, no. The Game of Thrones one, there was a sequel that got canceled. A Stranger Things game that was canceled. Um, yeah, hard to say what actually I... killed them. But I think I think the story was was whatever company bought them were like, Fuck it. Go nuts. And yeah. then they went nuts and they were like, oh, never mind. We don't have any money. We're closing and killing everything. Goodbye. Son of a bitch. And the last one, Jetpack Joyride. That's the last thing I got of any consequence on PlayStation 3. You know, I really, I really like Jetpack Joyride as a, uh, as a mobile game. I wouldn't play it on the PS3, but it's fun. Yeah, I think that just like dropped everywhere. Um, I don't know. Not a strong month, obviously bunch of dlc but it's december you know november was the month where everything came out and yeah you know december Man, those was, uh... that resistance collection though like if you've never played the resistance games they're really really solid story driven um first person shooters like just really good stuff 
I think I played a little bit of the first one. I think that was as far as I got. No. It was just for that. not my thing, you know? No. Because it was and, the Halo killer. It was, it was the, the Halo latest killer. and greatest Halo killer, because that was what yeah. everything needed to be. Like, no first-person shooter could just be a first-person shooter. Every magazine was like, is this the PlayStation killer? Is Time Killers the Halo killer? Is Metroid Prime the Halo killer? Like, nope. no. It's just Halo's a different Halo. game. <laughs> yeah. It's just another game. Fuck off. It's nonsense. <laughs> Stop being dicks. All right, let's see if the Xbox uh, hailed, uh, fared any better. Let's see. Uh, there was the Skyrim Dragonborn DLC, uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown Slingshot. Oh, it's just okay. a content pack. Yeah. Oh, Power Rangers Super Samurai uh, for Connect. There's a winner. Mm. Um, Guardians of Middle Earth were on here. Battlefield 3 Aftermath, Far Cry 3, a map pack for Halo. Just karaoke. Just that's it. No, no <laughs> subtitle. Just karaoke. No dancing. Nope. No two stepping. Just karaoke. Oh, Tropico Four Megalopolis. I, I don't get the Tropico games, but there's that's that's a, a thing. Yeah. Oh, there's that American Mensa Academy game again. Oh, that, remember that so kept showing good. up last month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, Connect Party. Uh, that's weird. I've, says, I've been to a Connect Party. Very, very different than what that game was. <laughs> uh, there's another Forza expansion pack, Sleeping Dogs tournament pack. Yeah, again, just a lot of DLC and Connect junk. Retro City Rampage came to the Xbox that Ugh. month. That game is exactly what oh, the wait, title no. says. It is a retrocity. That was Fucking that was that a, game. That was January. Never mind. I skipped past it. Yeah, Oof. that was it for December. Wow, not not great. Not a big month. These. Yeah, yeah, not a big month for either of these. Let's see how the Wii U did in its second month in existence, huh? Let's see how the Wii U we we launched in November 2012 with a just ridiculous onslaught of games. Let's yeah. see how did they follow things up. We have Rapala Pro Bass Fishing. Fuck yeah. Not Cabela's a great start. Dangerous Hunts 2013. Getting Family worse. Family Party. 30 Great Games. Obstacle <laughs> Arcade. Yeesh. Marvel Avengers. Battle for Earth. Was that I even know good? What, I don't know what that is. I, I, don't, I don't either. I remember this game. I remember it existing. I remember working in Toys R Us and seeing this game. And it came out. I know this game existed, and I sold a bunch of copies of it. I've never spoken to anybody who's actually played it. I don't know anything about this game. What the hell is this? It's got a 50 meta score. I, the scrolls I mean, have landed, and now it is incumbent upon you to assume the role of your favorite Marvel superheroes and defeat epic enemies during the secret oh, invasion. I can be Sleepwalker? Uh, apparently. Uh, <laughs> I can be features... my favorite Marvel superheroes. 20 different characters, including the Avengers, Iron Man, Hulk, Captain America, and Thor, as well as other superheroes and villains from the Marvel Universe. Players use motion gameplay to execute super attacks, unleash devastating special moves, and battle their friends in a vast array of game modes. This just seems like the genericest of the generic right here. Yeah. It's a whole freaking Avengers game that never seems, seemed to have come out anywhere but the Wii U, and probably mobile if I had to venture a guess, but... Most likely. All right. Let's see. The Assassin's Creed 3, the Hidden Secrets pack. So there was some DLC for Assassin's Creed 3. Uh, 007 Legends, Wheel of Fortune, The Cave. That's a good one. Oh, my God. I fucking love The Cave. Oh, wait. That was until January. Shit, we're already done. Okay. Shut oh, up. Oh, that yeah. was it. I didn't, I gonna, I didn't, I I didn't think ahead. that's... All right. Yeah. Shush. Yeah, that was in the cave was the end of January. So wow. Wheel of Fortune, Bond, this weird Avengers game, and some fucking shovelware. Okay, this is going great. Yeah. The hits just keep coming. All right, next up is Wii. Wii's gotta be good, right? Come on. This oh, is the yeah. Wii. There's, there's there's nothing but greatness on the Wii at this point. <laughs> the Wii U Love is the out. Wii. Okay, let's scroll down to twenty twelve. Uh whoa. Oh wow. I was I'm already in November, so let's see. What hit Wii? <laughs> two games. We got two games. We got Wii Sing Pop and the digital WiiWare game Vampire Crystals. Mm. That's a killer. That's, that's, a, that's quite a month. <laughs> All right, are we going to get 
there's got to be somebody's got to have done something genuinely good for December of 2012, right? Somebody has to have done something. Let's see what was going on in the original Nintendo DS in December of 2012. I don't have a good feeling about this. Just no. kind of scroll in the beginning and see. Uh, Christmas Wonderland 2, <laughs> Crystal Adventure, <laughs> Kids Learn and Play, World Music, Chuck E. Cheese's Alien Defense Force, <laughs> Cake Ninja Christmas. <laughs> Shut up. Cake Ninja Christmas. That's like fucking Surf Ninja Christmas. Get out of here. All right, let's see. That, that, let, let's see if there's anything on the other page, because like nothing else jumped out of me of any note. Wizard Defenders, and that's it. Yeah, wow. All right, DS, DS has Yeesh. failed us. All right, th- come on, 3DS. 3DS has got to give us something good. I mean, because it's the 3DS. It's still pretty early in the 3DS's life, but come on. Let's see, November, where's December? <clears throat> All right, so there was a couple of uh, DLC course packs for New Super Mario Brothers 2. A uh, bunch of shovelware. Bunch of shovelware. <laughs> 3D game collection, 55 and 1. Escape Vector. I feel like that was a pretty cool game. That's an eShop game for 3DS. Okay. I don't know anything about it, but I feel like I remember hearing Escape Vector was cool. It's got a pretty high rating. It's a 75 mm. rating. Uh oh fluidity spin cycle that's a good game. So fluidity was this neat uh WiiWare game and it got a uh, full on sequel for the 3DS called Spin Cycle uh which is it's pretty fun. Uh you're like I don't a, know that at all. Yeah. So it's like a tilt uh, kind of like Loco Roco like uh okay. you, you have to tilt uh the world and like your water so you have to like guide this water through mazes and stuff. It's neat. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um Ah, oh, damn, that's January. January kicks off fucking great. The first game listed on January is a, is a, is a winner. But yeah, that's it. All right, so some DLC and Fluidity Spin Cycle is a genuinely good video game. So there you go. We've got Fluidity Spin Cycle and the Resistance Collection. They're our, our top picks so far for this month. Uh, for 10 the, years ago. What did the PSP bring to us? We're down to PSP and Vita. This can't be great. No. Um... Ridge Racer 2. I'm not that sure that's only... okay. That's it. Oh my. I'm that appears sign. to be the last game released for the PSP. According to yeah. Metacritic site, the last listed game they have... Oh wait, no. That says December 20th, 2022. What? That can't be right. Did Ridge Racer 2 release for PSP... Yesterday? Just now? <laughs> no. I'm looking at the wrong year. I'm like, 2012. What the hell is... Oh, that's weird. All right, let's look for December 2012. One. One release. Hotel Mogul. Oh, even better. <laughs> yeah. Sign me up. All right, PlayStation Vita, you're our final hope for a really solid month. Uh, Uncharted, Fight for Fortune. Okay. But that's the turn-based card game featuring the yeah. heroes and villas from Uncharted. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. Let's see. What's on the next page? Because that's just that's the only December they have here. On that page, we've also got DJ Max Technica Tune. Yes. So good. Eco Fish. Oh, Lemmings. That was a pretty good version of Lemmings on the uh Oh, that's yeah. the Vita version. I love Lemmings, but I've never played the Vita version. Big Sky Infinity, Surge, Shiro Karo Hakiri Tsukero Kuma. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. Burn the Rope, Knit Underground, Sonic and All Stars Racing Transformed. Uh, Damn fine. It's a, game. Really, it's a really good fucking game. I can't imagine it's bad on the Vita, so there you go. No, Oddworld. that's where I first played it. Oddworld Stranger's Wrath HD, Crash Planets, Cosmic Cleanup, Jetpack Joyride. Uh, Chrono Vault? Yeah, not bad. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, December of 2012 kind of went out with a meh. With, with a meh. Not, not so great. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's move on to 2002. Let's see if December of 2002 was any better. Uh, we're looking at PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, Xbox, GameCube, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. Um, 
the PlayStation 1 had a solitary release of E.T. Interplanetary Mission. So good. Can't beat that with a stick. Nope. And why would you? Could try to, but why would you want to? Right? Why would you? And that's not even the last E.T. game that's going to come up tonight. No, it's not. All right, I feel PlayStation like, 2. I, I mean, that was on purpose for sure. Like, seriously, they were celebrating the anniversary of E.T. for Atari. Yeah. Without a doubt. Well, it was in December 2002 on PlayStation 2. See, now we're, you know, we're past the point where there's a bunch of DLC games. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon. Wow, the first Ghost Recon came out. NCAA right. College Basketball 2K3. The original Budokai. Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Oh, I remember... That was, we- that was fun. We were working in Toys R Us, and the Atari rep came in, and she was like, yo, you're not even going to believe what we... She, like, came in in November. It was like, there's a big game coming out from Atari in, like, in like three weeks. It's going to be amazing. Oh, they the weren't Budokai. Atari yet. This was the Infogrames Oh, no. Rep. Oh, that Infogrames. This was still yeah. Infogrames before they, That's before right. they bought the Atari name. and Because uh, Dragon Ball Z games weren't a thing in America. And then all of a sudden, they're like, oh, wait, we could sell Dragon Ball Z games in America? Well, shit, let's get to work. Let's and fucking was, do that. It was a solid game. It was fun. And they annualized the hell out of it. Uh, yeah. Pro Race Driver. Uh, IHRA Drag Racing 2. Star Wars The Clone Wars. Seek and destroy, but that's it. Oh, damn, that's it. December 11th was the last release in uh, December. Okay, I mean, that's pretty solid for that's December. The original Ghost Recon, Budokai, which was a genuine hit, uh, and Star Wars The Clone Wars was, you know, it was an okay game. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Good job, PlayStation 2. Let's see how your competition held up. What did the Xbox bring us in December of 2002? Scrolly, scrolly. January 2. All right, here we are. December. Where does it start? Oh, this is looking great. This is looking sexy, Dan. NCAA College Basketball 2K3. Legends of Wrestling 2. Nightcaster 2 Equinox. Frogger Beyond. Metal Dungeon. (laughs) Crimson Sea. Super Bubble Pop. Uh, Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. That was a fun game. Not a that great was fun. game, but a fun game. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. Ouch. Not, not, you're not standing up to PlayStation 2 with that lineup, sir. No. What about GameCube? What about Nintendo? What was Nintendo coughing up in December of 2002? Let's see here. Wow. January. <laughs> scrolly, wow. scrolly, scrolly. <clears throat> I forgot that even came out on GameCube. Holy cow. All right. Wow. There's a lot coming out. All right. So NCAA College Basketball 2K3. Evolution Worlds. That's a cool one. That's mm-hmm. the uh, the Evolution game that was on Dreamcast ported to, to, to GameCube. Disney's PK Out of the Shadows. Nickelodeon Party Blast. Frogger Beyond. Star Wars Bounty Hunter. I know a lot of people like that game a lot. Yeah, um, not a huge fan. But I never tried I get it. it, but yeah, I, I get it. You know, it was cool, I guess. Disney Sports Football. Yeah. This is the one I forgot came out on GameCube. Blood Omen 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. I totally forgot that hit GameCube at all. That's so weird. Uh, NHL 2K3, Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, Dr. Muto, SpongeBob, Revenge of the Flying Dutchman, Dragon's Lair 3D, Fireblade, Lord of the Rings 2 Towers. Hmm. Huh. Yeah, not bad. No, not bad. N- nothing megaton, but I mean, you know, between two towers, uh, Dr. Muto was kind of neat. Blood Omen 2, Bounty Hunter, and Evolution. That's not bad. Not great, no, it's but not, not bad, bad at all. Definitely stacked up to PS2 better than uh, Xbox did that month. Uh, there were no releases for Game Boy Color, though it was technically still alive. And let's see how the GBA did for... December 2002. Scrolly, scrolly, scrolly through all these November games. Right, Metroid was last month. So how the hell did they follow yeah. up Metroid the following month? <clears throat> Sorry, I got a bunch of gunk in my throat. Oh, damn. All right, Street Fighter Alpha 3. Fantastic port for Game Boy Advance. Yep. Uh, that was great. Kirby's Nightmare in Dreamland. That's my favorite Kirby game up until, you know, the new one that just had... Forgotten Land that just came out this year. Nightmare in Dreamland is a remake, a full-on remake of the NES game, which is 
fantastic. It's a really, really good remake. Wonderful game. Medal of Honor Underground. This was, I think, actually functioned as a first-person shooter. It's a shit game, but the technology <laughs> behind it was pretty cool. Yeah, Fucking... the fact that they made it work is is absurd. Jesus. A Link to the Past was a month. It's the next month. Mm. So we had Metroid Fusion last month, and this month we're at Alpha 3, Kirby, and Link to the Past and Four Swords. Holy crap. Uh, Motor Racer Advance, Lunar Legend... Lunar Legend is like, if this is the game that I, I think it is, I hated this game. I always wanted to try to get into the Lunar games because people loved them so much. And this game, yeah. like, you took damage for walking, I think. It was just obnoxious to play. Oh, man, there really was, like, a weird thing like that. Yeah, I can't uh, remember for yeah. sure if it was that game. This game seems to be pretty well liked. It's got a 79 Metacritic, but uh. let's see. BattleBots, Door the Explorer, The Invincible, Iron Man... This is 2002. Hmm. Hmm. So this is before... When was the original Iron Man? The movie. This is just comic book Iron Man. I don't remember this game at all. Huh. Hardcore pinball. Oh my god, Carnage Rally with the worst box art of all time. <laughs> with the dude in the blue hair. Oh my god. Yeah. That game's actually kind of fun. That's ridiculous. Oh, shit, that was December. Never mind. Sorry, Carnage Rally comes off the list. Hardcore Pinball was the last one. Uh, there's your clear and present winner here. Link to the Past, Kirby's Nightmare in Dreamland, and Street Fighter Alpha 3. Those three games, that's that's huge, especially for December. Yeah, yeah that's massive. That that No other platform came close to that level of quality. Good, good job. No. Good job, Game Boy Advance. All right, so 20, looking way better than 10. Let's see how 30 smells. Uh, so 30, we're dealing with NES, Genesis, TurboGrafx-16, Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Game Gear, Lynx, and PC or Arcade, if anything struck me. So let's start with NES. Um, NES, we had The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends, Best of the Best Championship Karate, Caesar's Palace, F-117A Stealth Fighter, George Foreman's KO Boxing, The Great Waldo Search, The Jetsons, Cogswell's Caper, Joe and Mac. Mega Man 5, RC Pro M2, Simpsons Bart Meets Regular Active Man, Swamp Thing, Terminator, Tiny Toon Adventures Cartoon Workshop, and the Young Jesus. Indiana Jones Chronicles. Good God. That was a lot. That's and a like, lot. I mean, most of it's not great, but Mega Man 5 and RC Pro M2 are fantastic. Yeah. Tiny Toons game is all right. Yeah, the Cartoon Workshop was pretty okay. It was really short. Yeah. It wasn't as good as the first one. The first Tiny Toons game was great on NES, but yeah. I never played Swamp Thing. I didn't like any of the Simpsons NES games. I uh, love the fact that there is a Swamp Thing game. Like, that <laughs> yeah. just makes me happy. I fucking love Swamp Thing. It's such a weird character to make. A... Swamp Thing, like, at that time had a movie and a video game. Like, like a cartoon fucking series. Swamp Thing. Yeah. Oh, God, I forgot about the cartoon series. I think that's what this NES game was based on, was the cartoon that was oh, airing man. at the time, I think. It could be very wrong, but... If yeah, anybody is looking... For NES. If anybody's looking for something really good to read, uh, just as an aside, and you somehow missed, if you're into comic books, and missed when DC was doing the New 52, the New 52 Swamp Thing shit is amazing. Yeah, that was pretty solid. There was a lot of good stuff in New 52. There really was. And then they anyway. de it up. But anyway. They, uh, solid, yeah, they did. Solid yeah, they month did. for the NES, especially considering, you know, what, what year we're in. We're in 92, you know. Genesis and Super Nintendo are out, and NES is still getting some solid Quality titles. titles. Yeah. I mean, Mega Man 5. RC Pro M2, both those games. RC Pro M2. Pro M2 are really, really, like, they're, those are yeah, great Yeah, it's really NES good. Games. Genesis has a massive month, like just numbers wise. Uh, there's a lot of Genesis games. Ariel, the little mermaid, Batman returns, Cal Ripken, junior baseball, Captain America, and the Avengers championship program, cheeky Ch pro am cheeky, cheeky boys, clue X mutants, gadget twins, great wall to search Madden 93 Lotus turbo challenge, Muhammad Ali, heavyweight boxing outlander pro quarterback, Risky Woods, Road Rash 2, Steel Talons, Sunset Riders, Super Battle Tank, War in the Golf, Terminator 2, the Arcade Game, Tecmo World Cup, Ninja Turtles, the Hyperstone Heist, Toxic Crusaders, Uncharted Waters, 
WWF Super WrestleMania, Chicana Forever Man, World of Illusions, Streets of Rage 2, and Echo the Motherfucking Dolphin. Oh, my favorite game of all time. That's Holy a shit. really, really good mo- I Streets of Rage 2, you kind of won. Uh, yeah. But like, you, I mean, that. I didn't realize Hyperstone Heist and Streets of Rage 2 were in the same freaking month. That doesn't seem right. I just, I just have to double check the. Uh, uh, no, the I'm, I'm just waiting. Here. I calculate. North America, the Hyperstone Heist was December 11th, 1992. Streets of Rage 2. December 20th, 1992. Holy shit. Man, that's this a real good month. This month is nuts. That's a like, real good month. Nuts. I'm, I'm double checking Echo the Dolphin, too. Like, That's a really good month. Jeez, yeah. Echo the Dolphin was indeed uh, December 1992. Holy crap. I mean, let, let's let's just pick out the, the big ones here. Batman Returns, right? That property great was humongous yeah. at the time, and that's a great movie adaptation. It is. Championship yeah. Program, uh, sorry, Pro-Am, was the uh, Genesis up conversion of the NES RC Pro-Am 1, yep. which wasn't as, you know, not as cool as RC Pro-Am 2, but still, that's really cool. Having yeah. Rare publish on a non-Nintendo platform for the first time in a long time. Madden 93, that was, what, the second Madden game ever. Yep. Um, so that's, that's, that's a big, hairy deal. Road Rash 2, Sunset big Riders. Deal. Yep, Sunset Riders um, is great. Turn into the arcade game, you know, not amazing port, but still such a huge property. Hyperstone Heist, Super WrestleMania, Chicana the Forever Man, Disney's World of Illusion, Streets of yeah. Rage 2 and Echo the Dolphin. Holy cow, what a month. Yeah. That was Sega firing on all cylinders. I don't know what came out on Super Nintendo, but I cannot imagine it, it, it can stack up to that. No, I just can't. I, I don't see how it could, but we're going to uh, find out. We are, but you know what didn't stack up to that? The Sega CD had in it. <laughs> oh, this reminds me. Uh, uh, Greg, our listener Greg, my friend Greg, he uh, yeah. let me know that when you were reading the commercial about the Depeche Mode uh, episode of Turning Tracks, yeah. you were talking about Duran Duran. You were naming Duran Oh, Duran shit, songs. I was. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as you just started saying that, yeah, I really was. Son of a bitch. All right. Man, maybe I don't like Depeche Mode at all. I don't know. Anyway, I was reminded of that because the first game on the list is In Excess Make My Video. Oh, man. Followed by Echo the Dolphin, Prince of Persia, Sewer Shark, and Wolf Child. Yeesh. Mm-mm-mm. Delicious. Swing and a miss. Yeah, Sega CD, month three, not looking too sexy. Uh, no. TurboGrafx-16, let's see, we got a couple of releases. We've got Dragon Slayer, The Legend of Heroes, Samurai Ghost, Shockman, Summer Assault, and Time Cruise. I do not <laughs> Fuck know yeah, any Summer of Assault. Games. Summer Assault is one of my favorite games. One, because it's so fucking stupid. But two, <laughs> is because I was stumped you hardcore years ago in a stump oh, to Chris. Tr- yep, yep. Yeah. I remember that. Wow, Fucking I forgot all about assault. that. That's yeah. amazing. Mm. Uh, the Neo Geo had a pair of releases with Art of Fighting and Viewpoint. I guess you can't what? really under... Art of oh, Fighting's okay. great. Yeah, Art of Fighting. Alright, let's see how the Super Nintendo did. Uh, just glossing over it, it... No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a bunch of games but I don't think there's anything coming close to Genesis this month we've got Bulls vs. Blazers Cal Ripken Jr. Baseball Test Drive 2 Gemfire Jeopardy Jimmy Connors Pro Tennis Tour Warp yeah. Speed Chester Cheetah Too Cool to Fool <laughs> Goal The Magical Quest Starring Mickey Mouse Rival Turf Bazooka Blitzkrieg Gods Lethal Weapon Musia. NBA All-Star Challenge, NHLPA 93, Pro Quarterback, and Pushover. I, sad month to be a Nintendo fan. Yeah, I mean... Rival wow. Turf is okay? Rival Turf's, Turf's okay. I like Pushover. I think it's a really fun puzzle game. It's not um, Streets of Rage 2. It's not, it's not Hyperstone Heist, you know? It's not Hyperstone, Hyperstone Heist. Heist is like, you know... 
it's not Turtles in Time, but still. Sure. <laughs> Genesis was just dropping bombs, and Super Nintendo yeah. was like, we got this other Mickey Mouse game. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's, not... pretty, it's pretty good. It's not it's okay, Luigi, but it's all right. Uh, a lot of soccer that month. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's Yeesh. let's move on. Sorry, Super Nintendo. You, you know I love the Super Nintendo way more than Genesis, but swing and a miss. Month. Yeah, swing and a miss. Let's see how the Game Boy did. Game Boy's looking pretty good. Original black and white Game Boy hitting us with Avenging Spirit Battleship. Uh, good game. Yeah, Avenging Spirit Battleship. Best of the best. Bonk's Adventure. Centipede. Dark Man. Doctor Franken. The Humans. Mega Man 3, Megalit, Tailspin, and Universal Soldier. That's not bad. Yeah, Bonk's Adventure, I think, was a pretty solid port. Avenging Spirit's a great game. Uh, Portable Centipede was still kind of novel back in, you know, back in this time. Mega yeah. Man 3, uh, that's, that's, that's solid. Universal Soldier, I think, is the Game Boy port of Turrican 2, which yeah. I can't imagine is very good, but, you know, points for trying. But they did it. They sure did. I don't know if they should, but no. Between Avenging Spirit, <laughs> Fox Adventure, Centipede, and Mega Man 3, solid. Still nowhere close to that month for Genesis, but no. solid. Uh, let's talk Game Gear. Let's close out 1992 with the Game Gear with Defenders of Oasis, The Majors Pro Baseball, Shinobi 2, The Silent Fury, Chikan, Silent The Forever Fury. Man, Streets of Rage 1. Uh, Simpsons, Bart vs. the Space Mutants, Predator 2, Lemmings, and Arch Rivals. Pretty not bad. good. Not bad. I don't think it... It's, it's close, because Streets of Rage for Game Gear is really impressive. Uh, it Shinobi is. Shinobi 2, I feel like, was pretty decent. I don't know how Chacon was on uh, Game Gear, but Lemmings was pretty solid on Game Gear. Arch Rivals is fun. I think it's a toss up between like Sega was clearly doing very well with the exception of Sega CD between Game Gear and uh, Genesis really taking it to the Super Nintendo and Game Boy Game Boy way less. So Game Boy, I think, held its own with Mega Man three um, and uh, Avenging Spirit and Bonk's Adventure. But yeah, Streets of Rage, Shinobi 2, Chicago Forever. I think Defenders of Oasis was something decent, too, if I remember correctly. It's not. Was this related to the Legend of Oasis? Maybe that kind of like RPG ish action RPG. That series? sounds right, but I don't know for sure. Yep. Yeah. This is related to that Defenders of Oasis. So that's pretty solid. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. That is a solid month for Game Gear. Sega really took the, took the cake on this month. Good job, guys. <laughs> well played. Well played. Nintendo held its own. NES and Game Boy did way better than Super Nintendo, but it was just a, it was, that was that was a blowout. Good job, Sega. Yeah. All right, back to the forty, and this is a, this is a pretty small one, so we're gonna wrap up on time. As far as I can tell, there was nothing of note released in arcades in nineteen eighty two, uh, in December nineteen eighty two. Uh, the Intellivision had a single release of Royal Dealer. This has okay. got to be a this has got to be a poker game or something, right? Uh, right. Yeah, for sure. Let's see. Royal Dealer for Intellivision. Yep. It's a, it's a, it's a card game. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah, okay. Uh, as far as I could tell, nothing was released on the ColecoVision, uh, but the Odyssey 2 had a game called Attack of the Time Lord. Fucking what? Doctor Who game? Is it a Doctor? What is this? Attack of the Time Lord. All right, so... There's like a creepy red skull, a bunch of lines. What in? The, oh, it's oh, it's a Space Invaders game. <laughs> oh, okay. Actually, it's more like a Galaga game, honestly. Like, cause the things are moving all over the screen in like weird swoopy patterns. This huh. looks kind of neat. Hey, way to go, Odyssey Two. Way to go. <laughs> well, well done. Uh the Vectrex had a fat lot of nothing. Uh, <laughs> The poor Atari Fifty Two Hundred. I'm gonna. I'll, I'll save the Twenty Six Hundred for last because that has the stuff to talk about. But the Fifty Two Hundred, yeah. which uh, let's see, Fifty Two Hundred launched. Was that last month? No, Fifty Two Hundred launched in October. Yeah, and we're just now seeing Defender and Real Sports Football. That's it. Oof. I mean, I think Defender for Fifty Two Hundred was pretty good. I mean, it freaking better be at this point, right? Still, though. You're, you're not, you're not <laughs> selling your fancy new console yeah. in 1982. 
uh, with a you know marginally better version of Defender. Yeah, and it's pretty nice looking. It's pretty close to the arcade version. That the I will say that for it. That's not bad. Still, Way to go Defender for fifty two hundred with your non centering joystick. But over on the twenty six hundred, we have Alien, Dragonfire, E. T. the Extraterrestrial. Fantastic Voyage, Gamma Attack, Gorf, Guardian, Megaforce, Real Sports Football, Rescue Terra, River Raid, Vanguard, and Wizard of War. It's not bad. That's not bad. I mean, look, obviously E.T. is what it is, but that game sold pretty damn well to start with, and I liked that game when I was a kid. Sure. Um, Alien, based off the movie. Gorf is great. Um, Gorf is great. Yeah, Gorf. I played the Coleco version, uh, the Coleco Vision version, um, way more than anything else. But it's great. I've never played the Coleco Vision version, unless I'm making that up. Maybe I didn't. Now you're having me question things. It looks neat. It looks it looks closer to the arcade game for sure. Looks okay. Then I did play that. (laughs) I'm not making it up. I love how much this this game is just a a shameless ripoff of Space Invaders. Like, oh, to the sure. extent that they stole, just, just literally repurposed purpose sprites from Space Invaders in this game. Cracks yeah. my shit up. Um, but yeah, I played the heck out of the uh, 2600 version of that. That was great. Real Sports Football was a big step up, too. This was um, Real Sports Football in 2600. Uh, so the original football for 2600 was, like, kind of a laughing stock. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was... I didn't hate the game. Uh... I didn't get the game for sure. I never really understood it, but it's like, it's so incredibly rudimentary. This is a, a huge step forward and was really Atari kind of trying to take it to the whole in television thing where in television like our sports games kick the shit out of the 2600. And I mean, they did, but then uh, Atari put some, <laughs> freaking, put some effort into it and uh, yeah. they came up with some pretty, the real sports line was pretty fun. River raid though. River raids a classic. Mm-hmm. I'm the friggin' lo- love River Raid. That game's that game's a ton of fun. Uh, and Wizard of War, Vanguard was that a Sega game? What was Vanguard? I always forget this game. I know I have it for like six different platforms. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Vanguard, yeah, it's like a scrolly shooter kind of thing. That yeah. game was pretty cool. And Wizard of War, I always get this. I always get this game confused with Tower of Draga. What the heck would Wizards of War look like? Wizard? I remember this one much more in the arcade than ever yeah, on the home system. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the uh, 2600 version of this. Yeah. I just remember always being Wait, fucked this up a, by... this is Homebrew. 2019 Homebrew. Did Wizards of War... Oh, here's the original 2600 yeah. version, I think. It, just, it always threw me up because it's not Wizard of War. It's War. W O R, yeah. And I always like that always threw me off as a kid because I would see it. What the why'd they fucking spell it wrong? <laughs> That's weird. This, is, this isn't a bad this isn't a bad looking port. It's got a lot of fun Yeah, no, there. considering considering when it came out, like the limitations at the time, like it's not bad. Yeah. And Wizard of War is a pretty fun game. Yeah. Not bad. Not, not a bad month it's not for Gorf. <laughs> but it's it's no Gorf, but then again, what is? Uh, obviously, it's, it's hard to say it's not a bad month for Atari 2600 because on one hand, you have the all-time classic of River Raid. You have yeah. Gorf, but you also have E.T., which is like, this is the beginning of the end for the 2600 here. It is, yeah. Um, and I like E.T. It's not a great game, but it's nowhere near as bad as everyone made it out to be. It's just like, it's freaking weird and hard to play, but... Yeah. Ah. <sighs> Well, there you have it. That's it. That wraps up the 10, 20, 30, 40, and that wraps up, uh, that wraps up uh, the year for us. That wraps up another year of podcasting, Chris. Another year of free fucking entertainment. I mean, not free for all of you, but <laughs> some of you give us money, and we appreciate it. Um, Is this but my man, last podcast of the year? No, it's not. You and me are still going to record on the 30th. <laughs> that's right. But it'll be our first podcast of the year when we it talk about... indeed. The starter kit for the GameCube. Yeah, I don't know how this one's going to go. I assume GameCube prices are out of control, but... They are. Of course they are. But yes, uh, it's, been a, it's been a hell of a year. I am really looking forward to, to January and doing our, like, usual recap-y kind of stuff. 
you know, like a uh, year in review and then uh, our game of the years. Yeah. SAG Awards and the year in preview. Yeah. I've been trying to think of like the 2023 games that are coming out that are exciting to me. And there's there's a couple of really heavy hitters coming out that we yeah, know we, of in 2023. We have so. to uh, we have to start ironing the tuxes for the uh, the Stone Age Caveman or the Golden Caveman Awards. The Golden Caveman. Yep. Yes, indeed. That's right. I, the, I, uh, the Joseph tuxes and the Dry Cleaners. Jo- Gordon Levitt. The fuck was it? The JGLDs. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, and then at the end of January is the last starter kit, the very last uh, starter kit we have planned for the original Xbox. Like, that's wild. What do we do? Just start over again? I don't know. Do we do the next hundred dollars? Because when we originally started this, we were like, I mean, that's like two years of shit. That yeah. was two years ago, apparently. Two years ago. <laughs> yep. Now, now we're, we're coming up to the end. What do Whoops. we do next? I don't know. We'll figure to, it out. You know, we'll Listeners, to more topics. But yeah, we got, we got, we got. What do you want us? What do you want us time. to do? Do you yeah. want us to go to the next hundred dollars? Do you want us to? We do have to. What was the fucking thing I suggested the other day? The ranking the Nintendo systems or something like that? Is that what we were talking about in the Discord like a week ago? God, I don't know. A week ago seems like a month ago. Are you, no, we were because we were talking about like where the N sixty four would rank in the, uh, the pantheon yeah. of Nintendo right. systems. So we'll maybe we'll do a, a ranking episode, but we'll do. Because Nintendo's really the only fun one to do, like PlayStation, like, well, PS2's at the top, and then, like, whatever. Um, you know, there's only five systems, but with Nintendo, there's there's enough to go through. So we'll have some more ranking episodes. Yeah. Uh, definitely It'll be a for good the year. year. Yeah. We've got some fun, fun stuff planned. They're all good ones, Pinky. That's right. All right. All good, well, Pinky. Then uh, that that's it. That's our show. Like we said, join us next week when we reach our penultimate starter kit with the Nintendo GameCube, and also kick off 2023 with a starter kit because that's what we do. That's right. I hope everybody had a, a merry fucking Christmas. Yes. Um. You Hallelujah, know. Hope... Holy shit. Where's the Tylenol? Where's the Tylenol? Love Happy it. New Year. Yes. All the the happiest of holidays to all of our uh, wonderful listeners. I hope everyone has <laughs> happy, a happy holidays, season. but only to our patrons. <laughs> no, the patrons get an extra happy holiday. Everybody else could get bit. <laughs> See, right where? Well, this episode that we're recording now will go live on the thirtieth. Yeah. So yeah. So happy new year. Yeah, happy new year, and you know, we should have said Merry Christmas on the last episode. Just pretend we did. It was about bread. Everything was fine and merry. Anyway, we're on most social media platforms, and if you want to get in touch with us, we are not very difficult to find. All it takes is a quick look at our show notes, and you'll see links to our social media accounts, as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesake, StoneAgeGamer.com, and more useful links than you can shake a joystick at. If you'd like to get early access to this show's episodes, as well as a bevy of other shows on the Geekade Podcast Network, check out our Patreon, also linked to in the show notes. It helps keep this show running week after week, and all our patrons are loved and appreciated by Dan's own hands. That's right. Drives to your house. Strong, strong hands. Soft, mm-hmm. too. These I moisturize. Hands. This show's theme song, Square <laughs> Roots, was written by Banjo Guy Ali. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more by following the link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And finally, as always, we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks, and we'd like to thank all you folks for listening in the first place. That's it, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us for another year of podcasting. Uh, we, I love doing this show, and I'm not going to stop until somebody tells me I have to. So That's right. And even if you do, I'll probably ignore you. because Yeah, I'm still going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> It's my show. You don't get to tell me. <laughs> Fuck you. We started uh, this shit. And by we, I mean you. <laughs> and by me, I mean Dean. <laughs> <laughs> and by you, I mean Dean. That's right. Oh, I love that guy. Good night, everybody. On behalf of Dan and myself, keep playing games.